Hi guys, welcome to Travel with Austin. I'm Austin. Today I'm going to be showing you a forensic building for the criminally insane in Weston, West Virginia. Um, this is part of the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. It is one of the outside buildings. Um, I went here in May and got a lot of photos, a couple videos, and this is of the forensic building there. So as we're walking in, you can see the other people who were on this photo tour with us. Um, this building was a bit different, so walking in you can see where we'd have the glass area where prisoners could presumably talk of family, stuff like that. And then we have a little caged in area right there. Now this building would have held the um, criminally insane people. According to our guide, um, even though this was a photo tour and we really didn't get the historic information, he said that basically everyone would have been in here. And that there was really only one way in and one way out. Um, as you can see, this is where people would talk to each other. Obviously, it didn't work anymore because there's no power left. Um, and as we walk out, you're going to see this area. And this is really what most of the building looks like. Now, to me, this really reminded me of the showers at the Mansfield Reformatory. And it didn't really make sense because right here there are showers. Um, so after going through the whole building, we did ask about this, and apparently this area would have been where everyone was. Um, there was one of these on each floor. Actually, I think there were two on each floor. And basically, this whole room would be filled with beds, and all the criminally insane people would be in here. Um, this is where they would live. And as you can see, we do have a door over here. It's caged in. Um, I believe it was welded shut because I did try to open it and it just would not open. So yeah, even though this whole area looks like the shower area at the Minnesota Reformatory and heavily reminds me of it, this is actually where everyone's beds and stuff would have been. So now, if you also look to the right, you can see the windows and also see how the ceiling is. Um, the windows are really cool to look at. Um, if you didn't see the thumbnail, Definitely check out my photos on my photography website, that the link will be in the description. Because the outside windows of it are very cool looking, um, definitely interesting. And also this building, like a few other buildings at the in the area, didn't have stairs, but instead had ramps. Which I found pretty cool because I had never seen that anywhere before. So, here I am going out into the prison yard. Um, this was just a fenced-in area where I assumed that they could go outside every once in a while. As you can see, it is completely empty, and I don't know what it would have been like back then. Then there were two, um, death certificates that they probably used during the historical tours that talk about inmates that died there. And now we'll go back in to this area. Um, again, we had very little historical context, so I'm not really sh exactly sure what that middle area was. But I'm walking around, we can see this room, which is basically tiled and emptied. Um, and then we have more rooms like that up here. Um, perhaps these were like doctor's offices or like offices for the officers who were working in here. Um, yeah, we really didn't know what these were and we didn't ask. Then we have this weird plaster room where you could observe from the other side what was going on in the room. Um, there were windows and stuff. And it did look like that room was added in later, as you could see that radiator was kind of like half in the wall. And then there was a map up here, um, but it didn't fit in with the shape of the area we were in, so it was a bit confusing. And then finally, as we went up to the third floor, um, coming straight up, you'll see an area with a bunch of rooms in it that are kind of, they have no doors or anything, they're just kind of holes. Um, so I'll go in there in a second, but what we actually learned afterwards was that these are the seclusion rooms of the asylum. And basically, if someone was acting up in these big dormitory-style rooms, like this right here, that 
um, they would get put in these seclusion rooms and they'd be by themselves. So now here's another look at the um, dorm style rooms. Like I said, it really heavily reminds me of the showers at the Mansfield Reformatory. Um, the one where they just walk down the line. But of course, it's not. And then as we walk back around, you can see a toilet. And then walking over here, we do have the seclusion rooms. Um, this one still had a mattress on the floor. I'm not sure if they just slept on a mattress or if they had bed frames too. Um, all the doors were removed. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it was a safety issue. Um, oh, I guess one still had its door. But, yeah. They were mostly empty. Um, most of this building was empty. So, anyway, guys, I just want to show off this building um, as part of my series on the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you um, enjoyed the history. And, of course, this is a place you can actually go and tour in West and West Virginia. Um, they do have different tour prices. Um, if you go on the historic tours, you're not allowed to take videos, but you can take photos. But, according to our guide, if you go on the photo tours, which we did, you can take photos and videos. Um, and I think our tour was about 100 bucks for four hours and access to about five different buildings. So, anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thank you for watching.